Hello, Sunnyside family and friends, and welcome to this week's online worship experience. We are incredibly excited that you have chosen to join with us today, and I hope that you have your family and friends gathered together so that we can enjoy what God has prepared. I believe that he has ordained a word just for you, and I hope that you are open to receive all that he has to give. Here is this morning's message. Good morning, friends, and welcome again to the East Sunnyside Church of God of Prophecy. We're so glad you joined with us this morning, and we want to jump right into the Word of God this morning on our second uh, series, second of this series on countercultural living, countercultural living. Just to recap from last week, I gave you three points. Are we in, uh, getting so deep into society's norms that we don't know what sin is? anymore. So is it society's norm or is it sin? In Peter's words from our scripture last week, they walked in lewdness and lust and drunkenness and revelries, drinking parties and abominable idolatries. And interestingly, nothing on Peter's list of ungodly behavior was considered particularly immoral in Greco-Roman society. So not, at least not at that time. And so when Christians chose not to participate in these activities, they were simply labeled antisocial. Similarly, many ungodly behaviors today are accepted by society as perfectly normal, and modern society still has its idols. Drunkenness, lust, extramarital sex, greed, profanity, and other sins are generally accepted today as the norm. But we have to strenuously avoid these sins uh, despite how accepted they are all around us. We got to live as God's light. Listen, don't let this evil world dull your sensitivity to God's presence and God's will. Let's continue to be a light. Let's be that salvation in this dark world. The second question I asked was simple. Who do you look like? Who do you look like? Be careful about what you choose to worship because scripture warns us that we will become that which we worship. Whatever you spend time with will rub off on you. And just as spending time with wise people just might make you wise, choosing to spend time with worldly and wicked things will cause you to gradually adopt these worldly and wicked values. The person each one of us is today reflects what has been most important to us. If you are worshiping your heavenly father, there should be a distinct family resemblance. And then thirdly, I gave you this admonition to give God a wholehearted praise. Give God a wholehearted praise. Psalms 111 and 1 says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Listen, a distracted mind and a divided heart are incapable of worshiping God as he deserves. Let's stop dividing our loyalties and start giving God a wholehearted, fully committed and undistracted praise. How could we be so stingy with our praise or our worship towards him when he's given us so much? How could we withhold even a small fraction of our hearts from him? And furthermore, God's spirit is seeking to give us new and transformed hearts. An undivided heart is what he needs, focusing on the glorious God that will not only prompt us to give him sincere praise, but he'll enable us to give him a whole hearted worship. Make time, my friends, to enter the presence of God and stay there. Get into God's presence. Worship him with all that you have. And now this is what I call counter cultural living. There's so many distractions out there today, but give God your very best and your whole heart. But today I want to draw your attention to the book of Proverbs, where it's all about countercultural living. It's about living skillfully from God's viewpoint. It's about wisdom. And that, my friends, is the secret to countercultural living, operating in the wisdom of God and not in the foolishness of man. The beginning of wisdom, the Bible says, is the fear of the Lord. So let's get our priorities straight and let me be crystal clear. I don't care what this world says or what it has to offer. You cannot live successfully, soberly, God, godly, or righteously in this world without the Lord. 
Amen. Let's not get it twisted. We need the Lord. We need his guidance. We need his word and we need his spirit. And if you're trying to walk in this life without him, you're only fooling yourselves. In fact, I will venture to say that you're being quite foolish. It's the fool that has said in his heart that there is no God. And without God, you are as an empty and dried up well. You're hollow, you're barren, useless. Saints, I'm not sure why so many believers with good sense have said to the him or herself that they can do this thing without God. But I am from that school of thought that says, God, if you don't feed me, I won't eat. And God, if you don't clothe me, I will be naked. I can't live without him. I can't breathe without him. He is the source of my strength. He's the very air that I breathe. And when I was a kid in church, we used to sing this song that says, real, real, Jesus is real to me. He says, oh yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him but I can't live without him. And that is why I love him so, because he's so real to me. And that's why, that, that's the way we have to live our lives, knowing that we serve a very real God who really loves us and everything is in his hands. Children, you have victory because of this very real God. You have healing because of this very real God. You have real breakthrough and you have miracles because of this very real God. Is he real to you today? Stop pretending that you are where you are in today's society because of what you did. Paul tells the church in Corinth, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. And he tells the church in Galatia, he says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now back to the book of Proverbs. The writer declares in Proverbs 16 and 16, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. So this book is very serious about teaching us and prescribing to us in a very real way to live counter culturally. I want to share some nuggets of wisdom with you today, and I hope you brought your Bibles with you uh, and perhaps something to write with, because I really want to help you with this and I want you to get this. So go with me first now to the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, Proverbs, the third chapter, and we're going to read uh, a very familiar passage, but it's verses five through seven. And it reads, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to, to thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The first point I want to bring you for you this morning is depending on your own wisdom obstructs God's better plans for your life. I'll say that again. Depending on your own wisdom obstructs God's better plans for your life. To trust in the Lord wholeheartedly means one should not rely or lean on his own understanding. For human insights are never enough. We can never be smart enough. There's not enough intuition or foresight or insight that could adequately prepare us for life's journey. So stop trying to figure things out and let the Lord work it out. God's ways are incomprehensible, yet he is trustworthy. And all the wisdom a person may acquire may never replace the need for full trust in God's superior ways. The word heart in Hebrew refers to one's emotions, but more often to his intellect. 
such as understanding or his discernment or even his will. A person trusts in the Lord and acknowledges him. That, that's not just a nod or recognition that I see you there, but it is, an, it is an intimate knowledge of who God is. If you trust in him in all of your ways, all of your heart, you will find that God will get busy making your paths straight. This means more than guidance. It means God removes obstacles. God is making a smooth path or way of life, or perhaps better, bringing one to the appointed goal. Listen, your destiny as well as your journey is wrapped up into whether or not you put your trust in God. And he will put you on the right path, remove the obstacles, remove the pitfalls, and even place the right people in your paths to help you get to where it is you're going. If you let the Lord guide, I promise you, he will always provide. Proverbs teaches that those who follow wisdom have an easier and less problematic life. I'm not saying you're not going to have any problems, but if you get wisdom, it helps you get through life a whole lot easier. And listen, especially young people, listen, though, for those of us who acquire wisdom, we need to remember that we did not become wise by ourselves. Wisdom comes from God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Amen. So let me go now to Proverbs, the fourth chapter, Proverbs 4, and I want to begin reading at verse 23 through verse 26. Proverbs 4, 23 through 26. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. So here's my second point this morning. Your heart's affection determine your life's direction. Say it again. Your heart's affection determines your life's direction. And saints, the long, of, long and the short of it is God's word keeps your heart pure and safe. It is the word of God that will keep your mind right. It's the word of God that will keep your emotions in check. It is the word of God that will keep your pathways straight. And if you will allow it, the word of God will always tell you where to go, what paths to take, and also who to hook up with. Why is this so? Because the word of God is alive in us through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will keep whispering to you the word of the Lord. He will speak to your heart about what is right and what is pleasing to God. And he will throw some caution your way when you're about to go wrong or do something wrong. This is why you have to be so careful about what it is you feed your hearts. Amen. This is why you have to be so careful what you surround yourself with. You have to be careful about who you listen to and what you listen to, about who you hang out with. All of these things feed our hearts. Think about it from a human or, or, or a, bibli a, a biological perspective. All of us as humans have two major muscles that kind of dictate everything that we do. That is the brain and the heart. From the brain, we get things like sight and smell and touch and all of our senses. And from the heart, we get our emotions and our feelings. But not only that, everything physiologically flows through the heart. The blood, that life-giving blood that sends minerals, oxygens, vitamins, saints, you can't even breathe or think about survival without everything flowing properly through the heart. And the reason why people get heart attacks, that means that, that their life has been interrupted is because something is blocking the flow or clogging the passageways to and from the heart. We have to be careful what we put in our bodies because it could block the flow of life that comes through the heart. Fatty foods and chemicals could cause high, high cholesterol or plaque or clog up the arteries somehow. And it doesn't happen overnight, my friends. It's sometimes something that builds up over time. 
We ignore it because what we are eating or what we are drinking feels good for a moment. But if you keep eating and drinking the things that are bad for you, eventually it will catch up to you. The older I get, the more I really understand this, that nothing tastes better than what you feel. And I get it. Most of us uh, exercise or take care of other parts of our bodies. We even feed our intellect and whatnot. But you cannot ignore the heart because if you ignore the heart, you'll never be able to enjoy everything else you want to enjoy. Well, it's that same way in a spiritual sense. Above all else, the scripture says, guard your hearts. Be diligent with your hearts and because out of it flow all the issues of life. You want to know where, where it is you're going? Check your heart. You want to know how far in this life you'll go? Check your heart. You want to know the kind of people you will attract? Check your heart. You want to know if you can make it in this life? Then check your your heart. Somebody ought to write that down and put it everywhere. Put it on the refrigerator, on your desk, in the mirror, on the car dashboard. Check your heart. Flowing from the heart are the issues of life. And if you go, if you look a little further in the text, the writer is saying that if you get your heart right, then you also get your mouth right. I'm going to say that again. If you'll get your heart right, you also get your mouth right. Why? Your mouth will speak what it is that's on the heart. And since there is a creative power, if you will, that operates from the spoken word, you will soon find that what you speak will come to fruition. And I know what I'm talking about. Just ask your heavenly father. When God got ready to create this world, this earth, this atmosphere, he spoke a word. He said, let there be, and there was. And God was able to see what he said. And not only did he see what he said, he went a little further and blessed what he saw. And from the same mouth that created it, God saw what he said. And then he turns around and calls it, Good. Children, I think it's time that we be like our Heavenly Father. With the right hearts, you can speak to your world. You can speak to your earth. You can speak to your atmosphere. And since there is a creative power of life and death, uh, even in our tongues, you can produce your own atmosphere. And when you start seeing what you've been saying, bless it and go further by calling it Good. Amen. Bless what you said. Bless what you see. As you see what you said, bless it and call it good. But all of it starts in the heart. And that's why David said, create in me, O God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And how many of us are speaking from a pure heart today? And furthermore, how many of us are seeing what we have been saying? And furthermore, how many of us are not only seeing what we are saying, but after it begins to manifest, are you blessing it? Are you speaking blessings over your children? Are you speaking blessings over your marriages? Are you speaking blessings over your church family, over your pastor? Are you speaking blessings over your home and your family life and your places of employment? Don't, don't curse what God has provided, with you, provided you with. Learn how to bless it. Amen. Put away from thee, the Bible says, a froward mouth. That is that contrary and deceitful mouth. That those words of inflexibility, this headstrong and stubborn and unbending voice that says, I know it all and there's nothing else that you can tell me that I don't already know by myself. That's what we call perverse speech. It's perverse language. Listen to me, children, your mouth will kill you. Amen. Your mouth will kill you. Every morning I tell my sons before they go off to school, a scripture that says, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. And remember this, saints, get your hearts right and speak life. Get your hearts in the right place and speak life. Wherever you look is the path that you will take. If you're driving a car and you look to the left long enough, I promise you that car will begin to go left. If you, Whatever you're doing, you got to pay attention to the road and where you are going. That vehicle will go wherever you're looking at. Amen. That's why verse 26 says, ponder the path of your feet. 
and let all thy ways be established. Look at where you're going, but look at it through God's perspective. Write this down. The right heart will produce the right speech and the right speech will yield the right fruit. I'm going to say that again. The right heart will produce right speech and the right speech will yield the right fruit. I want to say it one more time because I want you to write it down. The right heart will produce the right speech and the right speech will yield the right fruit. Yes, a righteous heart will produce righteous speech and righteous speech is like a seed spoken into rich ground and it will yield a righteous crop. How many of us want to see a good harvest in our lives? Well, we need good seeds sown into our fields. Speak life, my brothers and sisters. A good report, the Bible says, maketh the bones fat. And I prophesy to you today that if you would be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Saints, get your heart right and put your heart in the right place and let the Lord take you down that righteous path. Amen. Jesus said in Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 45, he says that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, to his mouth speaketh. I have to stop here for today, but I'm excited about what God is doing in my life. I have to confess to you that it wasn't always this way. I always looked at my circumstances and many times I would curse where I was, not realizing that this is the place where God wanted me to be in the first place. I bought into the culture, at least the cultural way of thinking. And I thought that if I didn't like my circumstances, and I had some truth to this, you can change your circumstances, but I got to realize that my life does not belong to me. My life belongs to God. Oh, if every child of God would understand that, that your life is not your own. You belong to God. You belong to God. And so I said, I will change. I thought this in my flesh, I can change change my trajectory by doing some things. And every time in my flesh that I would fail, I cursed my path. Oh, but God, one day I got my heart right and I got my heart in the right place with God. Amen. And I had to realize that my current condition, while it was not my conclusion, but the where I was uh, is where God wanted me to be. I want to tell you something. If you'll get your heart right with God, you'll realize that God has you where he wants you. And not only does he have you where he wants you, he's getting ready to take you places where he wants you to be. Amen. So I had to come to the understanding again that my heart was not my own. So I stopped leaning to my own understanding. And in all my ways, I acknowledged and honored and reverenced him. And listen, when I turned loose the reins of my own heart and started trusting in him, when I gave up control and got rid of my own attitude and my spirit of discontent, and get this, also my warped sense of of entitlement. And that's what's wrong with the culture. We don't only have a spirit of discontent, but we got this sense of entitlement that somebody owes us something by virtue of maybe who we are, what we've achieved, what we've accomplished, but don't nobody owe you anything. Amen. And so when I gave it all over to the Lord, uh, truly he worked it out. God put me on the right path. His word now becomes a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So he not only put me on the right path, but he illuminated my steps. Yes, children, God still orders your steps. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. I'm going to say that again. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. Don't matter what the culture says, God orders your steps. He ordains you to be where you need you to be. He puts you in places where you need to be. He puts people into your lives that will take you to your destiny when you learn how to trust in him. Oh, I love that hymn that says, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word 
word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that thus saith the Lord. For every step that I took, I began to thank him. Yeah, he ordered my steps. He, he sent me to this place. He sent me to that place. He says, go here, go there. God ordered my steps. And for every step that I took, I began to say, thank you, Jesus. And the more we thank him, the more he blesses us. The more I thanked him, the more he blessed me. And the more he blessed me, the more I began to thank him. The more I spoke now, get this, to my atmosphere from a pure heart, the better the blessings I began to see. And then when I saw what I said, I went even further and blessed what I saw. Oh, oh, this was a hard day at work, but thank you, Lord, for my job. This was a hard day in the neighborhood, but thank you for my home. This was that the car broke down, but thank you, God, for the means uh, to pay for the repairs and everything. Give thanks. See, this, this is countercultural. Culturally, we're supposed to complain about stuff, but counterculturally, we give God thanks for the good steps and even the bad steps. Lord, we thank you. What was in my heart, my mouth began speaking it. Hear me, children. What is in your heart, your mouth will speak it. And what came out of my mouth brought forth the fruit of my life. Check your fruit. Check your fruit, children, because it's a product of what's in your mouth. What's in your hearts today? What's in your hearts today? Your fruit came from your mouth. What came from your mouth came from your heart. What's in your heart today? What is your mouth saying to your world? What do you see manifesting all around you? And as a result of what you're saying, what do you, what, what do you see? And not just that, but can you bless what it is you're seeing? I know we're on the, hopefully on the tail end of this pandemic. We're restless. We're tired. We want to get out the house. We want to move somewhere. We want to go somewhere. I understand all that. I'm, I'm restless. Oh, my goodness. I'm sick of doing the same thing, watching the same shows, whatever. But can you bless what God is doing even through this pandemic? Can you bless what God is doing even through this pandemic? Are you closer to your family? Are you reading your word? Are you praying even more? I venture to say if you are a child of God, you got a little bit more time to give to the Lord. Oh, I bless you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you're doing. Let me tell you the importance as I close to get your heart right in this uh, society. Your, your talent and your money will put you in places, but the character of your heart won't keep you there. The character of your heart won't keep you there. What's on your heart today? Let me pray with you before I go. Father, thank you, Lord God, that we are speaking to our environment and there's fruit from our lips. But God, I pray it's the right fruit. I pray, God, that there's something on our hearts that say, Father, we thank you. Let us be grateful. God, I pray for a spirit of gratitude and gratefulness amongst your people. God, in this society of entitlement, this society of give me what's mine, this society of, of, of dog eat dog and all this stuff, Lord, I thank you for where you have placed us in the body of Christ, where you have placed us even amongst our own family, where you've placed us even in this world. You called us to be a light. You called for us to stand out. Lord, Lord, this world is dark. This culture is dark. But you've called us as children of light. You said in Ephesians that we should walk as children of light. Father, be with us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Help us to be culturally, uh, uh, Lord God, not, not to line up, not culturally with the world, but line up culturally with the word of God, your culture, your perspective. What do you prescribe for us, Father, in the name of Jesus? I thank you for your people that are under the sound of my voice. God, I pray, God, that those of us that feel awkward or weird or like sore thumbs because we're not doing what everybody else is doing, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that we were not made to fit in. We were not made to be like everybody, everyone else. We were called as children of light. We are light in this dark world because you've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Be with us, I pray today. Be with us this week, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. God bless you. Listen, I hope that word was a blessing to your soul. I hope that it encouraged you. I hope that it challenged you, challenged you to the point that you surrendered your life to the Lord. If you have, if it has been a blessing to you, do you mind letting us know? Can you take a few moments and drop us a line at info at ESCOGOP.org? Again, that's info at ESCOGP.org. We want to join with you. We want to partner with you as you grow in your walk with the Lord. As I said before, and I'll say it again, East Sunnyside is good ground. If you believe that and agree with me, can you take a moment and just bless East Sunnyside with your generous giving? We have several ways that you can sow into this ministry and we want you to take advantage of it. Know that all that you give will be used for the furtherance of the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you and we pray exp exponential blessings on you and your household. Thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience. Yes, we miss touching, we miss greeting each other in person, but God has still afforded us this opportunity and we're gonna take advantage of it. So I'll meet you here next time with another opportunity to share in the goodness of the Lord. You all have a great week and stay blessed. Thank you.